Hey guys, it's Biggs, the Mad Aquarist. I've got a real treat for you today. I'm actually sitting in the basement of one of my dearest and oldest friends for many, many years, fish friend. Uh, this guy was actually the best man at my first wedding and stuff like that. We've been friends for about 30 years now. This is the mentor. This is the guy that taught me absolutely everything I've ever needed to know about building big plywood aquariums. He's got about a thousand or 1200 gallon tank behind me here or in front of me here that you guys can't see, but uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about that a little bit later. But I really wanna introduce you to this buddy of mine. His name's Dana Allen. Just so you guys know, I'm still here. This is Dana Allen, this guy I was telling you about. Hi. Thanks for having me, buddy. It's always a pleasure. So I thought we'd do a quick little interview today because we've known each other for so long. I thought maybe we should, uh, I think this is a guy that really needs to be known by the world. <laughs> I disagree, but okay. <laughs> Everybody needs to know you, and I'll direct all the fan mail to you directly. I'll okay. give me your. I'll, we'll put your. We'll put your phone number, and they can text you stuff all the time. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought it'd be kind of fun. We've known each other for so long. Uh, I remember back in the day, first meeting you and your brother Glenn in Winnipeg when I worked at, at the pet store. I felt like I was your dealer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you probably were for a while. And you guys were, you were big into the New World cichlids and stuff like that, and you kind of, that passion kind of rubbed off on me because I was doing rainbows and corys and plants and a whole bit of everything back then. And then when I got introduced to the New World stuff with you, everything changed. And as I'm going to show in some of the videos, you're going through some of that change too yourself over the years too. Yeah. But uh, maybe you can give us a bit of history about you, uh, how you got into fish, how it started, and first fish, and tell them about Dana. Uh, when I was nine years old, my father brought home a 10-gallon tank from Zeller's a store here, and it had, it, with a cheap metal stand. So we filled it in the kitchen, we're rolling it out in the living room, and the edge of the stand caught the edge of the, the doorway going into the dining now, I've room. met your dad several yeah. times. Yeah. I, I can imagine what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so literally the, the leg folded over and I basically caught the 10 gallon which spilled a third of its contents onto me and onto the floor. The swearing started at that point. So <laughs> my very angry father just pointed to my mom's, um, uh, what would you call it? Where all her nice dishes are stored, whatever that is called. China cabinet or, or whatever. China cabinet. So we literally carted this over, this tank over to the top of the China cabinet, and that's where this 10 gallon lived. But I can tell you, for the next two weeks after we got fish in it, and of course we broke all the rules, we dumped a bunch of water in, put the fish in, lots of them died. Yeah. But anyway, I was mesmerized for the next two weeks. Every time I came home from school, I would sit there in front of that aquarium and since then I've been absolutely you know fascinated with it. You don't have a video game system now either do you? So you know the kids today they just the, no. the aquariums aren't as important they have all that other no, stuff I, to take I, their I've attention. I've got literally away. big screens all around me of all the TV I need. Yeah living fish. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really cool. Now when I met you you were big into New World cichlids and you had all these big tanks well, how did you transition from all that stuff through all your youth and everything like that to the point where I met you? How did you get into New World Cichlids? Because you specialized in them for a long time. When we, when we, when I first got here, a friend of mine, Virgil Lenton, and I went to see another hobbyist, John Tomchuk. Long, you know, good story there. But anyway, John had a real fish room. Like he had tanks set up on racks all in a row, very well organized. It looked, I think they were all mostly 72s. But in the other corner of his fish room, he had a 300 gallon wooden tank. And I looked at that and thought, I could build that. And he also kept cichlids. And I was looking at that thinking, I wanted, you know, I was starting, I love spawning fish. And I thought, what kind of fish would I like to spawn? Because I don't want to just spawn everything and anything. So yeah. he had some really, really cool Central American cichlids. And I saw those and from that, I made the decision it was epiphany for me right there and that's what I was gonna What kind do. of time frame do you think that was? What year do you think that would have that been? That was 1987. Oh, okay. 1987. Yeah. So So it wasn't that far off that I met you because it would have no, been 88, you know, 89 it, it, that it, I met it, you and we it, were it, full it, in. All, it all kind of convalesced <laughs> all at the same time so I, I didn't want to just get my grandmaster spawning fish I wanted to get my grandmaster spawning a certain type of fish and yeah. that's what I went after so I for the next 10 years I spawned Pretty much nothing but central and a few South American cichlids. 
Well, that big award that you see on the on the wall behind him, that's actually from the Canadian Cichlid, Cichlid Association, and that's a New World Specialist Award. There was only ever two awarded, you and me. <laughs> <laughs> the organization is no longer around, fixed. but... It was, it was the only two of us that ever were getting it. I do actually see my signature on that because I was the chair for that. See? <laughs> now, is there any particular stories or things that you remember from all those days of keeping Central America? There's got to be some that stand out or some funny spawning story. or. Well, I mean, I got my Grandmasters. My final spawning was Sitikum, which I actually got from you. Yeah. You know, these were a five-year planned fish. <laughs> yep. And I literally... My, my last points to get my Grandmaster Sitikum, the, the true parrot cichlid, not the bastards you see out in the fish hobby today, but the true parrot yeah. cichlid was what I spawned to get that. Yeah, that's really, really cool. I seem to remember certain, certain funny stories that I remember back in the day that you may want, not want to remember, but I remember at one point in time you asking me for, uh, for a bunch of uh, dither fish. And I shipped you a box of Exodon Paradoxus, the Exodon Bucktooth Tetra. Yeah, they were, they were a horrible fish. <laughs> Literally, you ended up with this tank with all these tetras kind of in the middle, and then a couple of fish like hiding down in the rocks. And if the, any of them stuck their head up, they'd get bit immediately. I just, I just remember none them, of them got eaten. I just remember landing them, and it was like they, they took a minute out of the bag to uh, assimilate. And then they acted like a wolf pack, and you had about two or three pairs of fish that were oh, holding yeah, fry, yeah, it was and they terrible. cleared it out. It was terrible. They're a horrible <laughs> fish. Don't ever get them. But I'm what, good at suggesting fish. Just remember that. That's the point you're going to take from this. And uh, but one other story that stands out. I got to tell this one. We were. I was moving, and my I had a 12 foot gallon. It was a uh, thousand gallon, 12 foot wide aquarium. We were netting fish out of there to get fish out of the tank. And a 12 foot wide aquarium, four feet back, you have to get in the tank to catch yeah. things. Yeah. And while I was sitting in there, I literally had red hook silver dollars jumping over my shoulder. Yeah. It was the coolest thing. Dinner plate we, size, dinner plate silver, size dollars. silver dollars jumping <laughs> over my shoulder while we were netting. I still remember you had that big Formosus arowana back in the day, long before they were a trend, long before they were readily available. Yeah. You had that giant Asian arowana in there. It was, how old was it? She lived 29 years. Yeah. 29 years old. And you were gifted that, weren't I was, you? It was given yeah. to me, yeah. Yeah. That's a cool fish. I remember also the stories of back in the day that you waited seasonally for that weird beetle. Oh, and, it, and you can yeah. take that gray, natural green arowana and turn it blood red oh, by it feeding would, those it would, beetles. It was literally, yeah, it was like listening to me eat Rice Krispies, literally. Yeah. And yeah, they, she would color right up. That was really cool. Do you still have the board? I do have the board, but I was when you mentioned it, I was looking for it. It's around here somewhere. Yeah. Tell them about that board. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to remember um, who who was here. I'm trying to. Remember. Um, There's a certain famous fish hobbyist yeah. that is tattooed on my thigh. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Wayne Libel. Mr. Wayne Libel was in my house. <laughs> and of course, which is pretty cool. If you're a fish nerd, that's a pretty cool thing. But anyway, it was later on in the evening. And I remember running down the stairs. I Somebody had just left. I'm, I'm thinking, Wayne Libel was in my house. Wayne Libel was in my house telling everybody. <laughs> and then from the corner of the basement, I hear... He's still here. <laughs> I just remember you, had to, you got him to sign a piece of wood yeah, that was on the he, wall, he, and you cut it out when you moved. <laughs> he signed the wall next to that same 1,000-gallon aquarium, and when I moved, I thought, I'm not leaving that. So literally, I, I surgically cut out. Well, it was pine paneling. I surgically cut them out, and I have them here somewhere. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, the real, the real truth is that you've been my mentor for every plywood tank I've ever been, and I always give you credit for it because you've shown me everything. There's many people on the internet that build plywood aquariums, and I'm sure you can search YouTube and look anywhere for how to build a plywood aquarium, and they probably all will work. The only real difference between the ones that you'll find most online is they'll work for how long. You built a plywood aquarium that is still operational today. How old is that tank? Um. I built that tank in 1987, yeah. so that would put it at 32 years old now. And Bill Bishop in uh, Saskatoon here has still has that tank full of rainbows, yeah. I think. That's almost unheard of to have a plywood tank of that one, but the difference being is the integrity that goes into the build. I've, to this date, I've built oh, I, like just shy of 200 large wooden aquariums. Yeah. My biggest being a 1,600-gallon L-shaped tank that was 10 feet by 6 feet in, in the two L's. Yeah. And yeah, I... I could count 
on two fingers the amount of ones that I built that have actually leaked. And the one leaked because we picked it up on two pallet jacks and moved it back while it still had a bunch of water in it and the floor wasn't quite level. <laughs> So, yeah. How else do you move it? Really? Oh, well, how else, <laughs> yeah, how else do you move something like yeah. that? Exactly. Yeah. Now the big difference is that the integrity that you put into the build, all your background, all your, you know, your, 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 all that, all the thought process that you go into, you're basically engineering a product is what you're doing. You're not just building it because it's a wooden box made of, you know, and, and you're filling it with water. You're building something that's very, very well calculated. And almost everybody that builds these plywood aquariums builds them usually for the wrong reason. They always talk about cheap first. Yeah. And that should be the exact opposite, in my opinion, yeah. and I'm sure yours. Like nothing against glass aquariums, because I have lots of glass aquariums. The problem with them is at some point the, the seals will fail. I mean, the, the silicone has a finite life in that tank. Um, a properly built wooden tank, and I'm talking big tanks here. I'm talking tanks that are 300 gallons and up. I keep big fish, so I, I need big yep. aquariums, right? Those tanks, if one of those seals fails, I mean, that's a fairly catastrophic event. I've been at two people's houses when their larger glass tanks have failed, and it wasn't a good time, I can tell you that. So, I mean, a properly built, obviously, wooden tank will last a long, long time. Well, I've never, ever heard of a wooden tank breaking. A wooden tank, when it when it leaks, it's like, it literally, it's almost like a seepage. Well, it'll literally, they'll never break. They, what'll happen is you'll start to see a drip somewhere. Yeah. And you'll have a lot of, I mean, that's not the end of the world, you'll have a lot of time to fix that. Yeah. simply and it's usually something like a rock has pierced the finish or something yeah. something well, along that, that, that line same, that same tank we talked about the one that we cracked moving it i literally left it a year before i fixed it like that you know before i finally got around you know found the time and actually yeah. repaired it now and that it, was 750 gallons yeah i could really uh, that's a lot of water it's in the a basement lot of water, yeah. yeah would your wife like 750 gallons of water uh, on the basement yeah, i don't think no? anybody would yeah <laughs> cool well, that's awesome, Dana. Thank you very much. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll go into a bit more detail and we'll talk about building plywood tanks with a little bit more. Maybe we'll get some pros and tips from Dana in the next part.